Hello, I'm Ken Samples, and today I'm joined with by visiting scholar Sean Aish. Uh, Sean, you have uh, written about a topic that I find very interesting. Uh, Charles Darwin is a very controversial figure, uh, particularly for Christians, uh, thinking about his influence in the area of evolution. But you've uh, identified something that I think is really fascinating, and that that uh, Darwin has a Christian background. He had Christian colleagues who were who were friends and supporters. Tell us a little bit about Charles Darwin, his mentor, and the some of the benefits that were derived from that friendship and that relationship. Yes, Ken. I think uh, this uh, Charles Darwin's mentor is named John Stevens Henslow, and I think if there's one Christian scientist that everyone needs to know. I really think it's John Stephen Henslow. I did not intend that to rhyme, but it did. But uh, Henslow was Charles Darwin's greatest mentor and remained a devout Christian uh, to the very end of his life, which makes him a fascinating person from a historical perspective, regardless of anything else. But he was also a shining example of how Christians can do good science and engage respectfully with other scientists who are not Christian. Um, so uh, John Stephen Henslow was an English clergyman and naturalist, and he is the one uh, who both taught Darwin botany, mm. he was a very famous botany professor at Cambridge, and who got Darwin his famous voyage on the Beagle. In fact, Ken, Darwin sent all of his uh, samples that he collected in the Galapagos Islands back um, to Henslow in order to catalog them. And Henslow did that very well. So well, in fact, that Darwin uh, wrote how thankful he was for Henslow. And uh, what's amazing, Ken, is that uh, to the end of their lives, even though Henslow and Darwin belonged to different political parties, and even though Darwin became an agnostic and proposed the theory of evolution by natural selection without divine intervention, which Henslow never agreed with, Darwin still wrote to Henslow to ask for his advice as a mentor to wow. the end of Henslow's life, which means Darwin never lost his respect for Henslow. And I think, Ken, in our culture, where there's so much division, whether it's over politics or science, uh, Henslow is just such a shining example um, of how we can treat others and interact with others, especially on topics like science and religion. And one thing I would like to share, some of Darwin's own words uh, about Henslow. So I think there are two things, Kim, that really impressed me. One is Darwin recognized that Henslow loved other people. So this is a quote straight from Darwin. Uh, at one point, Henslow uh, was a per, uh, pastor at a church. And here's what uh, Darwin said about the way he cared for his parishioners. I think he cared somewhat less about science and more for his parishioners. In one of the bad years of the potato, there was a potato famine, uh, I asked Henslow how his crop had fared. But after a little talk, I perceived that in fact, he knew nothing about his own potatoes, but seemed to know exactly what sort of crop was in the garden of almost every poor man is in his entire parish. Wow. And so I think one of the things about Henslow that strikes me is just how much he loved others. And even though Darwin was not Christian and did not agree with him, um, he saw that in Henslow's life. You know, this is such a such an interesting area, particularly for reasons to believe, because we look at First Peter three when it talks about giving to every man an answer, but there's a way of doing it with gentleness, with respect, keeping a clear conscience. And I guess the question I want to ask you, Sean, is this: a lot of times Christians think that when they and their non-Christian friend, they hold worldviews that clash. And they think, well, there, there's going to be a there, there's going to be conflict. There's no doubt about that. But maybe mm -hmm. something that's that's not brought to bear is that there's also continuity. That is, uh, that is non-Christians are the benefits of being made in the image of God. Non-Christians observe general revelation. Non-Christians benefit from uh, common grace. And, and that, that idea, uh, I think, brings to the, to the forefront that 
look, uh, Christians can learn from non-Christians. Christians can have deep friendships, mutual supportive friendships. It's not always kind of a, a clash of ideas. How important is that today? I mean, you mentioned it a little bit in terms of our, our political uh, separation, but speak to that topic a little further. Yeah, I can. Um, so I think uh, going back to Darwin and Hinslow, um, even though Darwin uh, seems to have become an agnostic, and from everything I've read, Ken, Darwin's religious journey is very hard to understand. It's not exactly clear um, where Darwin landed. Uh, some people think he had religious thoughts at the end of his life. But um, and Darwin, um, uh, Hinslow was able to uh, interact with Darwin in a way that did not put Darwin off. And I think, Ken, in our culture, where there's so much heat and uh, not enough light, that is the main issue. Are, we need to ask ourselves, are we engaging with non-Christians and people who disagree with us, maybe even other Christians, especially on topics such as uh, science and Genesis, uh, but are we engaging them in such a way that, that they want to keep talking to us? Um, and if, if the answer is no, Ken, I think that maybe we should reevaluate um, the way that we're engaging. Because as, as Jesus said, as John said uh, in 1 John, um, if we say that we love God, but we do not love our brother who we can see, how can we love God uh, who we don't see? Yeah. And so well, I think it's absolutely essential. When I think about Darwin's life and some of the suffering he had uh, in his family, Suffering is sometimes very hard to uh, see how it fits with faith. Maybe that's a time, you know, to to show compassion, to to show support. And it sounds like Darwin had a mentor that did that. Yes, certainly. And as some of the viewers may not know, Darwin uh, lost his mother when he was a young boy, and then his father's death when he was in his um, later life, but his father's death was very hard on him. And shortly after his father died, his favorite daughter uh, named Anne died. And that death almost broke Darwin's heart. Um, from what I've read, uh, Darwin's letters after his daughter's death have moved people to, to tears, uh, Ken. And, and I think Darwin really struggled um, with those deaths. And I agree with you completely. Hinslow always showed compassion uh, to Darwin. He never condemned him. Um, and I think that's why Henslow could reach out to him um, when he was in need. And, and on this topic of science and faith in our culture, Ken, I think what's so important is that Henslow had a witness to Christians and non-Christians, both because of his excellence in science wow. and his excellence in character. And I think uh, as Christians, that's what we're called to do, excellence in our profession, whether that's a science or something else, and excellence in character. Wow, that's that is such a, an important part of kind of the, you know, the apologetic presentation. Sean, thanks so much for being with us today. Thank you, Ken, and I hope the viewers uh, get a chance to Google John Stephen Henslow and learn a bit more about his life or uh, check out my article. Great, thank you.